Hi, this is Jim Linnell. You know, I've been doing leather work for over 50 years now, and I've been teaching classes all over the place on behalf of Elk Track Studio. And of all of the classes that I've ever taught, there are none that are more important than what I'm going to show you right now. And that is, how do you get started in leather work? There are some basic techniques, some things that you need to learn, and if you learn those correctly, they will make a huge difference on how much enjoyment you get out of your leather work. So stay with me as I walk you through doing a pattern just like this, which will teach you how to use all of the most basic leatherworking tools. And you know what? We're down to the very last of the stamping tools. We've gone through all of the basic stamping steps. There's one more thing that we do, and this one really does make your design stand out. It's called the background tool, and it's kind of a, I don't know, a little diamond-shaped tool, long, elongated diamond. It comes to a point on one end. It's got a checkered texture, um, and it's... It's, this is actually probably the tool that came with my beginner's kit. It, I've had this one forever and ever. And you know what? I think it's still the one most people start out with. It, and if it's not, it's the one you should. It's the easiest of all of the background types of tools to use. And what it does is it, it takes and it mats down the leather in these openings. When you, you, you know, we've got leaves and petals and flowers and stuff like that. But then in between, we got these gaps where you can kind of see all the way through the design and everything. And if we use this tool um, in those areas there, we put a, a checkered and matted texture in there. And that uh, tends to give us even more three dimension in our design. And that's uh, what this tool is all about. There's a few things that will help you make this tool work easier and give you good results. And one of those is to um, make sure you get it deep enough. How deep should you be backgrounding these areas down? How hard should you be matting with this tool? And again, the rule I tend to follow on that is I want to background these areas down as deeply as I cut those lines or as deeply as I beveled those lines. So, you know, I could have this design standing out one-third the thickness of my leather if I do that. So, And just to make sure that I get the right amount of depth in there. One of the things I'll usually do when I have a larger background area like this to cover with this tool, I'll kind of go around the outside. I'll go around the design or around that background area uh, right up against the leaf or right up against the edge of that area with my background tool uh, making sure that I get as much depth there as I need. Uh, and that also then makes sure that I'll be really careful now that I don't take a, a bite out of uh, the edge of one of my leaves or something like that. That's, that's kind of a hard thing at this stage. But then I will come back and fill this in. I'll, I'll come back now and mat all of this leather in between down to that same depth. And you can, you'll actually develop kind of a walking rhythm with this one as well. You, the, the trick to getting it to come out nice and smooth is to uh, overlap the impressions quite a bit and uh, you'll you'll want to get this to come out fairly even without having to run over it too many times if it looks a little lumpy or if it's not all the same depth initially you can go back over it and and even it out but try to do that without having to go over it too many times and the other thing that helps to make your backgrounding come out this is the last of the stamping steps okay so theoretically your leather is going to be about as dry as as drier than 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 some of the other steps and I've found that having your leather um, a little bit drier when you're doing the backgrounding does tend to help with making these come out nice and even sometimes if this is too wet these you lose the distinction you lose that crisp matted texture when you're doing that so you want to make sure that you um, don't have it too wet when you're doing this, and you, you'll end up with a, a lot more even and consistent backgrounding texture. So make sure you know you know what you're backgrounding down. You don't want to like be backgrounding a leaf or something like that down. So again, study your pattern or make sure you know what you're what you're doing. But you can see it's it's burnishing too. I'm getting some really nice color where that that's being done. I'm getting some really good contrast, and that's. Again, as I was saying earlier, this is one of the great things about using, uh, you know, learning how to get the, the right, use the right moisture content to get that natural burnish to come out of your leather. If you're able to do that, 
you really don't need dies and antiques and finishes and like that to give additional 3D to your design. It it will develop just a beautiful patina all of its own. And it's just the natural color of that leather. So um, pay attention to that. Even all the way through, we got um, you know we're getting very close at this stage to to finishing this up and. Um, sometimes it can be tempting to hurry at this stage and, and you know now that we are getting we put you know some effort into carving this design this would be just the last time to hurry um, you don't want to at this point uh, like I said have a stray impression that takes a bite out of one of these leaves or whatever make sure that you um, are you know doing your best work even at the end here that uh, just as you were all the way through it um, but uh, you know this is this is the the basics of leather carving that what, what I've been showing you here is all of the things that that someone I, well the stuff I wish somebody had showed me in this kind of detail when I was starting um, I, I mentioned that I, I got to do a lot of trial and error when I was getting started and while trial and error does teach you some lessons they can be expensive lessons so you know if you can pick up a few tips and hints from what I'm showing you here hopefully it'll speed you along to that point where you're doing some leather work that you're really proud of and remember when I was talking about that little place that uh, the beveler just didn't seem to want to fit in there. This, this is the tool. The, the shape of this tool is made for defining like those small points like that. So that's the last spot here. I've got the background and so I'm going to very carefully make sure I bring out that little point, that little bit of a bud that's in between uh, these two stems here. And that, that tool does exactly what I wanted done. So you see how that, that background tool kind of, it, it divides up the design. It, it helps you to, um, to see all of the different elements of the design standing out. Oh, there's another spot here. We better get this one. Uh, and that, uh, but it, it really uh, adds another level of three dimension to your, your uh, carving when you do this background step. Um, and that really is all of the places that normally we would background. One of the things I'll do, and I'll just show you this a little extra tip here. Sometimes when I have um, a design that doesn't have a border or something like that around it, and I want to get a little more three dimension, I'll go ahead and back into some of these little background into some of these little places like this. But then, rather, since I don't have a, a crisp edge on the other side of it, I'll fade out that backgrounding as I work out and away from that. So you don't actually see where my backgrounding ended, but you can see, you know, I get some real contrast and some real additional depth way in tight in those little tight corners and such like that. So it's just another way to get some additional three dimension out of your, out of a carving like this here. So sometimes learning how to feather out your tools, that's kind of what that's called, feathering out your your backgrounding just kind of like we did with the beveler when we were doing that and with the pear shader when we were using it we feathered them out got a little lighter as we went this does, does basically the same thing so anyway but that's and I could do a little bit more there but that's that's the basics